new to SAP and feeling overwhelmed by all the technical jargon? You're not alone. Starting out in the SAP world can feel like learning a whole new language. There are so many terms, acronyms, and concepts that it's easy to get lost. But here's the good news. Understanding just a few core terms can immediately boost your confidence and help you navigate the SAP system more effectively. In this video, we'll break down the top five SAP terms every beginner must understand, clearly, practically, and with real life examples. These aren't just definitions. You'll learn where and how these terms show up in daily SAP work. By the end, you'll speak SAP like a pro. Let's dive in. Term one, T code, transaction code. T codes are like shortcuts in SAP. Instead of navigating through multiple menus, you just enter a code like FB50 or VA01 and go directly to a specific screen or function. These transaction codes provide instant access to specific functionalities, saving time and boosting efficiency. Think of it like typing Control S to save a document. It's fast, efficient, and eliminates the need for multiple steps. Example. FB50 opens the manual journal entry screen. FI module V, A01 starts the sales order creation. SD module, M. E21N creates a purchase order. MM module PA30 allows you to manage HR master data. HR module. Each module has dozens of commonly used T codes and SAP users often memorize the ones they use most frequently. Pro tip. You can use transaction SE93 to explore and customize T codes. SE93 even shows the technical program or screen behind the T code. Additionally, you can create your own custom T codes for Z programs, custom developed applications. For beginners, it's a great idea to maintain a list of frequently used T codes in your specific business area. This acts as your personal command list inside SAP. Term 2. Master Data Master data is the core, reusable business data stored in SAP. Unlike transactional data, which changes frequently, master data is relatively static and used repeatedly in processes across modules. Examples. Customer master includes general info like name and address, sales-specific data, sales area, pricing, and financial data payment terms, bank details. It's used during quotation, sales order, delivery, and invoicing. Material master, holds data about raw materials, finished goods, or semi-finished products. It's used in purchasing, inventory management, production, and sales. Vendor master, stores information about suppliers. This is referenced in procurement activities, invoice processing, and payments. Master data is often structured in views, so different departments maintain different parts. For example, procurement maintains purchasing data, while finance maintains accounting views. Importance. Inaccurate master data leads to major business issues. Wrong delivery address equals delayed shipments. Incorrect pricing equals customer complaints. Inconsistent naming equals duplicate entries. Pro tip, master data is usually created with T codes like XD01, create customer MM01, create material, XK01, create vendor. Many companies have dedicated master data management MDM teams who ensure quality, consistency, and governance of this information. You'll likely interact with master data daily, either viewing, maintaining, or reporting on it. Term 3. Organizational Structure SAP mirrors the real-world business structure using organizational units. These elements help define how data flows and who does what in a company. Key Components Client The highest level, a separate database. Company Code represents a legal entity used for external reporting. Plant A physical location for production or inventory. Storage location, a subdivision of a plant, manages stock sales org. 
Purchasing Org, Manage Sales and Procurement Data Flows. Example, a global company may have one client three. Company codes USA, Germany, Turkey. Five plants under those codes. Dozens of storage locations, each tracking inventory pro tip. Your user roles in data access and SAP are often linked to these structures. If you're assigned to one company code, you may not be able to access another, even within the same client. Term 4, posting period. SAP uses posting periods to control when financial entries can be posted. Think of them as the financial calendar gates that allow or block entries for specific dates. This ensures that transactions are recorded in the correct fiscal month or year. Example, if a company closes its March books, any invoice or journal meant for March cannot be posted unless the March posting period is open. This prevents users from backdating transactions or affecting already reported balances. Use case. Let's say the accounting team finalizes their reports for April. To prevent accidental changes, they close April and open May. Only entries for May can now be posted. This is controlled using T-code OB52, where finance teams can specify which account types, assets, customers, vendors, are allowed to post and during which time period. Additional notes, posting periods can be configured per company code. Multiple posting periods, like special periods, may be open at once, especially during year-end closing. Mismanagement of posting periods can cause failed postings or confusion during audits. Mastering posting period logic is essential for those in FI, CO, or audit roles as it directly affects financial integrity and compliance in SAP. Term 5. Client. SAP Client Concept. A client in SAP is a completely separate environment, almost like having different companies within the same SAP system. Each client maintains its own data, configuration, and user roles. This concept allows businesses to separate development, testing, and production activities. Examples. Client 100 equals training environment, where users can explore freely without risk. Client 200 equals quality or testing system, used for validating new developments. Client 300 equals production environment, where real business transactions occur. Why it matters. When you're in Client 300, Every click has real-world consequences, real orders, real invoices. In Client 200 or 100, you can test and train without risk. Consultant use case. A consultant develops a custom report in Client 200 and tests it with dummy data. Once it works, they create a transport request and move it to Client 300. This keeps production stable and avoids untested code going live. Pro tip, always check your client number. It's shown in the top left corner of your SAP screen. Never run test deletes or mass updates in the production client. Use SAP GUI's login pad to switch between clients quickly using saved system entries. Understanding the SAP client concept is essential for consultants, developers, and system admins to maintain data integrity, security, and project discipline. Conclusion. That's a wrap on the top five SAP terms you need to master as a beginner. Understanding these terms is your first step toward SAP fluency. Quick recap. T codes. Master data organizational structure posting. Period client. If you found this helpful, smash that like button and subscribe to SAP i5 for more weekly SAP videos. Drop a comment if you want a part two. Or let me know which SAP term confused you the most when you started. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Blast off!